For those of you brand new to programming, we're going to cover the algorithm I showed in the previous video. We're going to cover it in excruciating detail here. If you're comfortable with the algorithm, you understand what I did. No need to watch this video unless you want to be thoroughly entertained. Here's an array of ints. Well, first of all, I want to talk about what an int is. When we say int, we're saying integer number. It can be a 0, can be a 1, can be a 2, can be a 3, can be a 4. It can't be a 3.1415927. It must either be a 3 or a 4, not in between. That's an integer value. We also call them discrete. That's a technical term that will raise your salary. Uh, basically, we have discrete steps. You can be on the third step or the fourth step, but you can't be in between those steps. It's not like a ramp. Right, like a like a wheelchair ramp, if you would. Wheelchair ramps are nice for wheelchairs, and they're nice and continuous, but we're dealing with actual steps like on your stairs. Uh, that's what an int is. When we say int, we're actually asking the computer for a piece of RAM. All right, that's a variable you should be, hopefully this is all review for you, but when I say int, I'm saying give me a box of RAM that I can put a number in. So let me just stub some code out here. I'm going to say int value gets 8. So give me a box, name it value, and the equal sign here means stuff it. Take the 8 and stuff it into my box that I called value. So here's an 8 right there in my value box. Very good. By the way, integers can be negative or positive, but they must be discrete. So here I'm saying, hey, give me an entire array of ints. So let me draw an array. There we go. This is an array of ints. Each box can hold one integer value. If you think of an array, like an array of colors, a right, nice spread out array of colors. Let's see if we can. Oh, look at that. A simple Google search found me. An array of colors. I have lots of colors here, and they're all in their own little boxes there. Here's the all kudos to this. There, there's my source. Anyway, array of colors. Hey, I want an array of integers. I have a bunch of boxes here. These integers are assigned into each one of these boxes one by one. So the seven will go here. The three goes here. And the rest of the numbers go in like so. And then what's the name of this box here? We call it me ints. Now I'm not going to cover stack and heap in this video. We'll probably get into more detail on that later on. But we're naming this, this, this array of boxes, this array of ints, me ints. In fact, I want to move this over to the left here. And then we also number our boxes. This is called the indices of each box. So 7 is in the 0 spot. 3 is in the 1 spot. 6 is in the 2 spot. This is in the 3rd spot. And so on and so forth, all the way up to 7. That's an ugly looking 6 there. All right, why do arrays start at 0? It's kind of historical. Actually, it's not historical. It has to deal with the way that computers function. Again, we're trying to become engineers. We need to think like the computer thinks. We don't need to make the computer think more like how we think. We, as pure engineers, software engineers, computer scientists, I love that word, computer scientists, surgeon level engineers, we need to think like the computer thinks. And so if you want to understand why arrays are zero based, uh, here's a video for you. Click on this video. I'll tell you all about why arrays are zero based. But again, once you get used to the zero basedness, you'll never want to go back. It's just, it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. Mm, feels so good to be a true engineer. All right, well, say I wanted to print out the value here, 5. What box is 5 in? Well, it's inside of me ints, and it's in the fourth slot, the fourth box. So I'm going to come down here. Let's just comment this line out for now. And I'm going to say sys out, control space, uh, me ints, give me the value at the fourth slot. And I see a lot of newbies get this, mix this up. They'll mix up the indices with the actual values. These are indices up here. These are the locations. These are the actual values. Say it with me. Index value. Index value. Index value. <coughs> Hopefully some of you watched Sesame Street while you were growing up. All right, I want the value at the fourth index. That'll give me five here, so I'll hit control. F11, and oh, look, it's a tiny font, but you can see we have five there. So good, we print lined the five. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drag this down here. I'm gonna clear this out because I think we're done with that. All right, so we're gonna call a function that we wrote in the last video called index of. And index of simply looks through each box one by one and tries to find the values. So 
Let's uh, in fact, I I kind of flashy here. I said print line index of. Let's let's just let's make this more basic. Int index of the value five gets. Hey, go find me the index of int to double. Thank you. Stupid clips. Bring that down. Um, index of. Hey, look inside of me ints. And I'm looking for the value five, all right? And then right here, I'm just gonna say, well, let's print line the index of the value five. Again, I'm making an int here. Give me a box to store the index, blah, blah, blah. Let's come up here. So we come up here and the array takes on the array that we passed in, which is me ints. So whenever we say the array up here, it's actually me ints. And we say, hey, so let's start out at the index zero. Again, these are zero based. Watch, I'm going to drop the indices right here above the numbers. Okay, how convenient. Seven is at zero, three is at one, two, so on and so forth. We're going to start i out at zero. So I'm going to draw i here. We said int i. That says give me a box that I can stick an integer in. So this box will be i. We'll start it out at zero. And then down here we say if the array at sub i. Well, what's sub i? Well, i is zero, so it's basically the same as saying, if the array at zero is equal to target value. Well, what's target value? Target value is five, because we passed a five in to target value like so. So target value is five, I'll just draw a five there. All right, if the array sub zero, which is seven, so this kind of all disappears and replaces itself with a seven. A seven, if seven is equal to five, then return i, return zero, meaning we found it, we found the five, and it's at zero. Well, guess what, seven's not equal to five, so eh, that's not gonna work out. Let me erase all this. Uh, there's nothing left to do down here, so we come up here and we say i plus plus, that means it increments i's value by one. Add one to i, we'll put the one in right here. It basically changes the value inside of i. It reads the zero, adds one to zero. Zero plus one is one. We put a one in there. And then we repeat. We come in here and we say the array sub i. Well, what's the value at the array sub i? Well, i is now one, so array sub one is three here. So this is a three. And oh, target value didn't change. I guess I shouldn't have erased. I should not have erased that. Target value is a five. Okay, if three is equal to five. No. Three is not equal to five. All right, go back up to i plus plus. So that increments i by one. The one becomes a two, and we come down in here, and again, oh, I erased the target value. That's a five. Remind me not to erase that. If the array sub two, well, that's a six. Is six equal to no, no? Do it again. And we're going to keep going until i becomes four. So we'll say i plus plus, and i becomes a three which will test the one value down here. And then well, this will eventually become a four. And now, oh, look, look what happens now. Look what happens now. If the array sub i, which is four, so the fourth spot here, if, if that's equal to target value, okay, the array sub i is five. If five, that's a five, big five. If five is equal to five, then return i. Hey, we found the value you're looking for, the number five, and that's at index number four. So we stop right there. All execution just terminates. We say, go back, go back to where you came from, and the four comes out here. Basically, all this vaporizes. It's like the function was never, ever called, even though it was really called, but this whole thing disappears, and a four shows up. And then we take the four, and we stuff it into the index value, and then look, we're gonna print it. Print the value of the index. Let me run this. Control F11. Um, did it print? Did it print? Yep, there we go. There's our four. We call this algorithm a linear search because we're searching one after another. So we first tested the seven, then the three, then the six, then the one, then the five, then the zero, and the nine, so on and so forth. This is a linear search. We're literally just looking for a value inside this array. It's a lot like if you lost your keys, right? If, when I lose my keys, I end up looking through all the little spots in my house.
Cha-ching. Anyway, linear search. You get the idea. We just we have no idea where the keys could be, so we just start looking through everything one by one. Start at the beginning. Hop, 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 hop. It's a linear search. It almost looks like a line, but actually the term linear comes from the complexity of this algorithm, which we'll talk about in another video when we talk about big O. Nice linear search. Now, I also want to point out a few other things. Most programmers, and by most I mean almost all of them, and by the way, I know a lot of programmers, uh, they'll put braces after each of these block statements. So the for loop, that defines another block. So we put an uh, opening brace here, closing brace here. The if statement, that defines another block. So we'll put an opening brace here, closing brace here. And so we have these nice blocks. I think that's a waste of brain cycles and screen real estate. All of a sudden now I have two braces for every block I'm doing. Drives me insane. So I don't do that. That's preference and style. But I also don't do it because screen real estate is at a prime for me. Because I'm doing a lot of these tutorial videos. And I've done a lot of written work too on programming code. So I try to save some space with the braces. But really in my industrial code, I won't put braces in there unless the whole team's doing it. And then I'll just conform to what the team's doing. Because it's good to be consistent with your team. Uh, also, here's another thing. Oh, multiple return statements. Ah, a lot of programmers, especially the old dogs, freak out about multiple return statements. And, and for good reason, because if you have multiple return statements, uh, that could lead to some errors. But really, I've had, I've, had returns, I've had multiple return statements bite me in the neck, and I can't really get into the details right now. Uh, just, just know this is a soft spot. It can bite you in the neck, but 98% of the time it won't. And, and I'm a cowboy. I'll do multiple return statements. Totally religious debate, by the way. And by religious, I mean... It's kind of a personal preference thing. A lot of programmers say, it's not religious. It has to be one way. No, it's religious. And I'm going to have multiple return statements. Uh, maybe I'll make a video on multiple return statements and why and how they can bite you in the neck. But I just wanted to point that out. Now, also notice that once we find this value, we stop. We say, we're done. Return. Now, I'll show you a way you can get around the multiple return statements. But it's also kind of... A uh, religious debate, too, as to whether this is the right way to do this or not. I, I, whatever. Int index of target gets negative 1. We'll just assume we won't find it here. We'll start out with a negative 1. And then down here, we'll say, we'll return the index of target. All right? If we didn't find it, it'll be negative 1. And then instead of having a return here, we'll say index of target gets i. And then we'll say break there. Well, ah! <laughs> Some programmers get real about having break statements. And it's like, ah, oh, come on, let's just, there's better things to worry about. I'm not going to lose sleep over that. But basically what we're doing here is we're going to say, hey, we're going to look for the item. And once we've found it, meaning this if statement is true, then we'll say, okay, the index of target is at the ith index, which was four. Save that away. Break, meaning we're done stop, uh, which will bust out this entire loop, and then we'll say, okay, return index of target, which we changed to four right here. Okay, that works, but that's kind of, just, just put the extra return in there. Yeah. Okay, either way, the, the break stops us as soon as we find the element we're looking for. Um, I'm going to take this back to my multiple return statements because I like it. The return says, hey, not only break, not only return, but this is the value. Notice we stop as soon as we find the value that we're looking for. We don't let the loop continue. Have you ever talked to somebody that said, oh, yeah, I was searching for my keys, and they were in the last place I looked for them? Well, of course they were in the last place you were looking for them. Why would you keep looking for them if you found them? Ching. Hey, could happen, you know. <laughs> Why not? Uh, <laughs> All right, hardcore. I'm I'm babbling on. Wow, that was a long video. If you made it this far, tell me in the comments. Did it help you out? I assume you're a beginner if you got all the way through that. Some very core material there. Look, I got Facebook, Google+, or Twitter there. Subscribe, and then you'll get notified when the new videos go up.